Good morning. Do we have any announcements, Pastor Mark? Oh, yes, you know we do. Good morning. Good morning. Blessings to each and every one of you. A special happy Mother's Day to all who received and acted in faith upon the call to serve as mothers and provide that deep gift of nurturance, which is so necessary for each and every one of us. Thank you. Thank you for your service, and we hope you feel blessed and joyful this day. Uh, we'd like you to feel blessed and joyful every day, but especially today being Mother's Day. Thanks be to God. Carol Phillips has an announcement. Yeah. Don't mess this up. <laughs> Try not to. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I got all this stuff in my hands. First of all, there's a baby bottle here, and it's for Bethel Ministries, which is Voice of Hope now. And Bethel Ministries started in 1988, and it's a pro-life organization, and it's privately funded. And we're asking each and every one of you to take a bottle, fill it up between now and Father's Day with pennies, quarters, dimes, dollars, Five dollars, twenty, whatever you'd like. Even a check. We'll take a check. And this, uh, what this program does is it's a um, outreach, a like I say, a pro-life. And you can come, like if a young girl or even a 30-year-old thinks they're pregnant, they can come and have an ultrasound. And what it is is to let these people see what a baby looks like. That's my thought process, okay? I don't know if that's the main reason for it. But once you see that it's really a life, you'll either keep the baby or put it up for adoption. It's, like I say, it's a pro-life. And what they do in this ministry is after they, actually I'm one of the clients, not a, I'm not a client. I should have been 20 years, about 40, 50, right. But anyways, uh, I work with the clients. They come in and they go through, they, we, don't, we just don't hand things out. They have to go through a, like classes, um, parenting classes, anywhere from infant or pre-baby to uh, four years old. And they can come in and they earn what they call baby bucks with just play money. I mean, we don't give them real money. It's play money. And what they do with that money, they can buy diapers, formulas, baby wipes. They can buy brand new clothes. And once a month, they can come into what is called a clothing closet and get a bag of clothes. And they can even bring clothes in and exchange those for another bag of clothes. You know, their kids, they can recycle their clothes in and out. There's three uh, centers, one in Marion, which does the ultrasounds, one in Bucyrus, and one in Upper Sandusky. And it's privately, like I said, it's privately funded. And believe it or not, if you just put pennies in here, I'd like to see a little more than pennies, but mine just might have pennies, I don't know. If you fill this up, it's $20, and that will go a long way to help this privately funded thing. Another thing they do is they have a uh, fundraiser that the warehouse sponsors in September, and they had a 5K yesterday. So we would like each and every one of you for the next month or so, and Matt Primer and Betty Jo will be at each thing handing these out this morning. And we'll take them back in Father's Day. That's it. Oh, the car shows next Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> if you would please rise, we'd begin our worship. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in want. Lord makes me lie down in green pastures, and leads me beside the still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through this valley of shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And just as Psalm 23 reminded us of our shepherd's care, our next song reminds us of that too. You are so good to me. Strange. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whose spirit we have been reborn to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. Rejoicing in Christ's victory over sin and death, let us come before God, who calls us to repentance. God of life, by the resurrection of your Son, you make everything new. Newness scares us, and we confess to shutting our doors in fear. We have not listened to voices that challenge us. We have resisted the Holy Spirit, moving us in new directions. Our hearts are slow to believe your promises. Forgive us, God, and renew us to embrace without fear the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, Christ is alive, and death has lost its power. Through the waters of baptism, you have been born anew by the living word of God. Know that your sins are forgiven in Jesus' name, and that the spirit of the risen Christ is alive in you both now and forever. Amen. Amen.
holy, holy, God Almighty, who was and is to come. God of glory, you're so worthy, all the saints bow down. Holy, holy, God Almighty, who was and is to come. God of glory, you're so worthy, all the saints bow down. Holy is your name in all the earth, righteous are your ways, so merciful. Everything you've done is just and true. Holy, holy God, are you? Holy, holy God, are you? Hallelujah. Let us pray. O oh God, our shepherd, you know your sheep by name and lead us to safety through the valleys of death. Guide us by your voice that we may walk in certainty and security to the joyous feast prepared in your house. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for our offering, and our special music this morning is Scott Blackford. Yeah. I'll try that again. Hear my cry, oh God, attend to me. From the end of the earth I cry, cry unto thee. Overwhelmed though my heart may be, lead me, Lord, to the rock so high, for there in your shelter I no, I will be. So will I sing praise to thy name forever. So will I sing praise to thy name forever. In your house, O oh Lord, will I stay, covered here underneath your wings, in you I trust. And you, Lord, hear vows that I pray, giving to me the same. As those saints who fear your name, so love you I must. So will I sing praise to thy name forever. So will I sing praise to thy name. Lord, in your mercy, you will preserve us, will preserve us all. And I will forever sing, Alleluia.
Hear my cry, O oh God, attend to me. From the end of the earth I cry, knowing your love is wide. Knowing your love is wide, I sing. So will I sing praise to thy name forever. So will I sing praise forever. Amen. Verses 42 through 47. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had needed. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers those who were being saved. Second reading is from the second chapter of Peter, reading verses 19 through 25. For it is a credit to you if, being aware of God, you endure pain while suffering unjustly. If you endure when you are beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure what you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he not, did not threaten. But he entrusted himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the cross so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were gone astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Morning dawns and evening fades, you inspire songs of praise, that rise from earth to touch your heart and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower, your name is a shelter like no Sing it louder, as nothing has the power to sing but your name. Jesus, in your name we pray, come and fill our hearts today. Lord, give us strength to live for you and glorify your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your name, let the nations sing it louder, because 
nothing has the power to save but your name. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Your name is a shelter like no other. Your sing it louder cause nothing has the power to save but your name is a strong and mighty tower your name is a shelter like no other your name let the nation sing it louder cause nothing has the power to save but your name Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter, reading verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know, know the voice of the strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. Here ends the reading. You may be seated. At this time, we have Children's Church, I think. Yep. Good. Always good to get that strong affirmation. <laughs> Any children? Yeah, there they are. Got a passel of them there. Take your time. It's good. It's all good. Enjoy. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you have provided us with this opportunity to worship you. In this time of worship, and hearing your word and sharing your supper, help restore us, O Lord, from those things which defeat us. Grant us your grace, dear Lord, and help us always enter by the gate of the sheep. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Well, at the end of last year, I had an EKG, as many of us do. I went through the process of being connected to a machine that tells the technician and the doctors how my heart is doing. That's what an EKG does. You lie still while this machine tries to see if you're functioning okay. Now, my EKG did not take long. Within minutes, the technician was scanning my personal printout, and with a few quick glances, she says, well, your heart looks okay to me, but we need the doctor to take a look. When the doctor arrived, he too took a quick glance at my printout, and he said those immortal words, you'll live. I like a doctor with a good sense of humor. I asked him, what does he look for when he looks at an EKG? He said, oh, I've been trained to recognize a healthy heart, I know what your heart looks like, how it is supposed to function. We can read the EKG and detect that you have a healthy heart. So what we're really looking for are indications that something is wrong. We know what it looks like as well. We're looking for what looks wrong, what needs addressing. I thought all about that, and I concluded that I think pastors and other spiritual professionals need a spiritual EKG, not just for ourselves, but for everyone who claims to be a Christian. I mean, think about it. 
Would it be really worth your while if we could just plug you up to a machine and that machine would say, your soul needs to be addressed, there is something wrong, or we could read in the printer, printout, you'll live. Wouldn't it be nice if we had access to that kind of machine, it was that easy. Well, the reality is, for those of us who do believe, who have said yes to Jesus Christ, well, we do have access to the condition of our souls. The Holy Spirit, God within us, reveals to us the condition of our souls. When we listen, the Holy Spirit informs us of our spiritual health. At least that's been my experience in my personal faith journey. I know firsthand what it means to need restoration. For me, I'm plagued with specific symptoms. When these things happen, I'm on alert. I don't sleep well, I'm fatigued, I feel terrible, irritable. Relationships that should fill me up and normally do literally drain me instead. Oh, I know what it's like to need restoration. As a matter of fact, if I had my spiritual EKG hooked up over the last few months, there would have been days when you had rushed me to the ER. I know what it is to feel that sense of need, to know without a doubt that I am in need of restoration. And what I've discovered along my faith journey is that I'm in continual need of restoration. It's not a one-time experience. It's not that my soul is restored and that I'm good for two years or four years or until the next checkup. Keeping my soul restored needs does not work that way for me at all. It needs constant attention. What I have discovered is that I am in continual need of restoration. It is no secret to you, if you've been paying attention at all to the world around you, that the world in which we live can be very destructive to us. The world has a way of depleting our souls. Thus, we must be on guard at all times because we're in continual need of restoration. You are. You are in need of continual restoration. I believe that your soul is the very essence of who you are. It's your mind, your heart, your spirit, everything within you, and yet we are in continual need to have that soul restored. You know exactly what it's like, as I do, to make a statement that reflects an unhealthy soul. You usually make this statement about yourself or to someone you love or a friend or even to God. You may utter the words, I can barely do this anymore. I need some relief. I'm in need of some kind of help. Like me, you know what it's like to cry out those words, to throw up your hands, and perhaps you make the same mistake I do. I attempt to restore my soul with my own strength. I attempt to fix it on my own I attempt to take care of things myself, and I'll tend to fill my life with stuff that doesn't even begin to have the chance of restoring my soul. But one of the problems with that is every time I go down that path, I fail. I fail. You too, if you try to keep your soul whole, healthy all by yourself, will fail as well. This is why so many of you right now are questioning your purpose. I've heard it from you as I have been circulating through the fellowship. There's got to be more to life than this, I've heard members say. Maybe that's why relationships in your life are draining you instead of filling you. Rather than lifting you up, these relationships bring you down. Face it, perhaps you're going through a difficult season because you're in need right this moment of restoration and you are in continual need of restoration. You have a soul. And if we neglect it, well, we are hurt. If we don't tend our soul, the consequences can be devastating. They really are. Is it any wonder that relationships within our society go through such a terrible time of flux and change, and there's so many difficulties just keeping a straight path? Well, if we're not getting our souls restored, I mean, this sanctuary should be filled with people. Filled with people who have made a connection to this ministry to come to have their souls restored. We don't want to look back upon our lives, having failed to restore, and find we've wasted our time. 
we don't want to have that conversation. But until we take the right measures to restore our souls, we are in danger of living that life. We are continually in need of restoration. That's all there is to it. One of the texts this morning that we heard in the context of our service was from the psalmist David. We all love this beautiful psalm. The 23rd Psalm has brought comfort to all of us at one time or another. David understood this need for restoration. He could have had anything. He was king of Israel. He actually took some of the things he shouldn't have taken. But he knew he couldn't be restored by his own strength. He understood that very clearly. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. In other words, God gives me everything I could possibly need. It's not by accident that David, who was a shepherd, uses the analogy of the shepherd and the sheep. Now, you may think about this and may realize that God is having fun with you whenever you hear this song. Because he's referring to you as sheep. And if you know anything about sheep, you know they're pretty stupid. It's not meant to be a compliment. It's just the reality. I mean, think about it. They can't fend for themselves. They don't see well. They easily stray when they're not paying attention. They need somebody to take care of them at all times. If you stick a stick out to the lead sheep and it jumps over it, you can pull that stick back and the whole flock will jump. One after another at the same exact moment that the sheep jumps. Honest to goodness, this is true. The Lord is my shepherd. The realization that we cannot go it alone, at least that. Now, before anybody walks away from here, I'm not calling you stupid. This is just what God used as the analogy for our edification. We cannot fend for ourselves in terms of our spirit's restoration. We can't do it. We need a shepherd. I also like the words, he leads me beside still waters. In Hebrew, that's one phrase that can also be translated He leads me beside the waters of rest. Now, I like that. Our souls need rest. Often, we don't even know it. We are in continual need of restoration. We are. And we're kidding ourselves if we do not attend to that. I have a good friend who's very good at restoring cars. Very, very good. He lives in Pittsburgh, and he just finished restoring a 1968 Cutlass convertible. It's red. It is pristine, it's gorgeous, and it growls like a tiger. Well, you know, I didn't know this before knowing him, but there are companies that do nothing else, nothing else, but sell original parts so that people like my friend who have more money than I'll ever see can restore automobiles. And my friend, well, he did just that. He'd order the original parts from these specialized magazines from yet reputable dealers. My friend also told me that there are people out there who will sell you imitation parts. No, pastor, say it's not so. (laughs) You need to know, he said, who is selling you what you really need in order to restore that automobile. You must go to the right source. Now, I know there are many people Not only people out there who have no experience with the church or very limited experience with the church, but also people within the fellowship who do not go to the right source when it comes to our restoration. As I said before, we'd rather have that void filled with other things. Some would rather read their horoscopes than go to the Almighty. What are we thinking? What are we thinking? Filling our lives with stuff? Horoscopes, other kinds of pursuits and interests, thinking, believing that somehow anything other than the Almighty could possibly restore our souls? Why would anyone live that lie? It will fail. It always does. Well, there are three things I know that I can count on to restore me. The first restoring application is making sure I'm reading God's word. I know, you hear this from me week in, week out, but we need to work on that as a fellowship to become a spiritual fellowship, and we need to meditate on those readings, 
by listening to God. When my soul is in need of restoration, the Almighty uses the scriptures to replenish and refill. If your spiritual diet does not currently include some type of spiritual reading plan, your soul will reflect that. Oftentimes, when I come to someone who's having a conflict within our fellowship, the first question I'll ask them, have you prayed about this? And I'm sorry to say, many times, the answer is no. What are we thinking? If you need a good place to start, start with the Psalms. We did today begin reading one Psalm each day and see how God will begin your restoration. Secondly, I look for individuals who are in a difficult place in life. I know that sounds strange, but if I want to find them, all I have to do is wear one of these because they'll find me. I look for someone who's having difficulties, who's worse off perhaps than I am. I look for someone who's having a little bit of a harder time than old Schering here. I try to become the hands and feet of Jesus for that person. It's amazing what a difference that kind of dialogue can make, not just for the person you're talking to, but for you who are doing the talking. And thirdly, through corporate worship and the partaking of Holy Communion. We have both these things in hand today. Coming and partaking of the Holy Meal restores my soul. I want to encourage you. Take care of your soul. Don't neglect it. Believe me, it's not worth it. I know it's hard work. It's hard work tending your soul. It's not easy. Sometimes it's even downright painful. But continual restoration is the need for every believer. Go to the Almighty and say, God, help me. I need you to restore me. I need you, O oh God. What else? Where else would I go? Nothing else will suffice. Take me to the places of rest where my soul can then be restored. I need you. Don't neglect this. Don't even dare. Your soul is too precious. Amen. Please stand as we respond to God's word and pastor's message. When we are restored, God is glorified through us.
medicine. You set my heart on fire. In the presence of a thousand kings, you are my one desire. And I stand before you now with trembling hands lifted high. Be glorified. Be glorified. Be glorified. And we join together confessing our common faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the living. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he poured it out for all to drink, saying, Take and drink, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of all sin. Do this likewise in remembrance of me. Let us be so bold as to pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated, and with the assistance, please come forward.
Clasp the hand of another one next to you. 
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, your voice sings in the church. Bless our worship that sharing bread and communion, we also share abundantly with people in every place. Today we pray especially for the Church of the Master and their leaders in Perrysburg. Your voice sings in creation, O Lord. We pray for the safe return of our confirmation students, parents, and leaders from Lutheran Memorial Camp. Preserve pastures and city parks, oceans and local waters, so that nature provides life and protection for all creatures. Your voice sings out among the nations. Curb the desire for vengeance. Turn us from dishonest speech and deceitful living. Lead us into your truth all the days of our lives. Your voice sings among those in need, the poor, the homeless, the suffering, the afflicted, the ill, and the hospitalized especially all those who are listed in our bulletin and along with any we name aloud or silently at this time. I ask your blessing upon the family of Daniel Thomas as well as for those who will die this day. Your voice sings in our homes Open the hearts of those who provide mothering care, that Christ's love would be revealed in the generosity shown to all of our children. We give thanks for the saints who, having followed your voice in this life, now dwell with you forever, joining their voices in endless praise. Receive our prayers, merciful God, and dwell in us richly through Jesus Christ, our life and our Redeemer. Amen. The God of all grace, who has called you to eternal glory in Christ, restore, support, strengthen, and bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And as we go forth, let us remember that as we enjoy God's wonderful world in the springtime, and remember that every word and every action that we have is made to worship him. Hallelujah. Before the day, before the light, before the world revolved around the sun, God on high stepped down into time and wrote the story of his love for everyone. He has filled our hearts with wonder. So that we always remember You and I are made to worship You and I are called to love You and I are forgiven and free When you and I embrace surrender When you and I choose to believe Then you and I will see Who we were meant to be All we are and all we have is all a gift from God that we receive. Brought to life, we open up our eyes to see the majesty and glory of the King. He has filled our hearts with wonder. So that we always remember You and I are made to worship You and I are called to love You and I are forgiven and free When you and I embrace surrender When you and I choose to believe You and I will see Who we were meant to be And even the rocks cry out the sound. 
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.